So um, <clears throat> let's talk about these blasted deposits for a minute. And uh, well, gold is vitally important. We need it for all sorts of reasons. We need it for uh, medical reasons like dental gold and things like that, uh, because it's non-corrosive. We need it for um, technical applications. It's a very highly conducting metal, and uh, we have loads of interest in gold. We also use it, of course, for jewelry and as a currency. So gold is uh, quite a special metal. It's very, very dense. It's coming at 19 grams per cube. And uh, if you compare that to quartz with 2.6, well, you can really work out why it would be falling out of a flowing water uh, system very preferentially. And uh, this is an image that Fran would have shown you probably earlier already. Um, this is from South Africa. This is um, a plaza deposits that got cooked later on. So it's a mix between gold and fool's gold. And this is another important thing. I mean, it's not quite as easy to find gold. It's not as trivial as some people think. And uh, there is a reason why fool's gold is very well known, because a lot of people get fooled. And uh, you need some good experience and special skills in order to actually find a lot of gold and get rich with it. So um, how do you do that? Well. Um, one of these special places could be, and this is actually quite fascinating, could be a waterfall. Imagine you have a river system with uh, little waterfalls like this image up there, or a major waterfall, and it carves out a little bit of a depression. Then chances gold with 19 grams per cube is actually deposited somewhere down here. So this is where it would actually locate itself. Or if you have sediment traps, if you have little depressions along the way, you would also find gold most likely concentrating there. And uh, here, if you have uh, a geological situation that you have, for instance, a more resistant rock sticking up or any other uh, form of obstacle, maybe it could be folded rock or something like that, and it creates these slightly different topographic areas in a riverbed, there are certain places where you have a much, much higher chance of concentrating gold as in others. And uh, this is almost the magic skill that some people develop to find these places. And once you're good at that, you can get super rich if you're in Alaska or places like that. Uh, or in the 1850s in California, during one of the early gold rushes in the, um, in the US, then you could get super rich very quickly. But you might need to look for a long time and you need to process a lot of rock and a lot of people actually ended quite poor. So it's not, as I said, as trivial as some people might think. Another issue, you might know this from early geography classes, uh, rivers usually erode in the outer bend when they're kind of going around a curve and they deposit in the inner bend. So if you find an old river deposit and you find the inner bend of a major curve, there's a good chance you might find some gold there if the river was actually draining a mountain belt that had gold. So another kind of thing is that when two rivers come together, each of them comes with its own rhythm and speed of water flow. And uh, also every uh, river has a slightly different load of uh, minerals in solutions and as solid materials. And where two rivers come together, you might have turbulences and things like that. And you might actually find that uh, there you could create these lens-shaped bodies of heavy mineral concentrations. And if one of these rivers has gold, chances the gold might concentrate here. So here is uh, some of these kind of types of gold deposits here, just as a summary. There could be uh, topography, there could be meandering rivers, there could be um, topography caused by geology, waterfalls, different rivers coming together. All of these would create uh, potential gold deposits, but the best gold deposits are actually recycled rivers. So when you think of the earth being a very old system and geologically there's a lot of recycling going on. If you have a river back in, I don't know, the times when there was no humans around long before the dinosaurs, and you created gold concentrations there. And then later on, due to geology, you actually take this material and recycle it again into a new type of river. 
hundreds of millions of years later, then you could make a secondary plaza deposit. And that would then give you a double chance to extract or concentrate the gold. And the richest deposits of gold, like Witwatersrand in South Africa, are of this type. And very often, because they're so old, they might have seen some later volcanic activity. They get cooked a little, and then some of the gold gets actually re distributed within the system, creating extra enrichment. So these unique situations coming together could give you a triple distilled gold concentration. And if you find that, you're a rich person. But uh, yeah, to find it is quite a challenge. So here's the other thing. I think uh, there's a misconception about gold nuggets out there. Gold nuggets are made in the river. They don't occur naturally. So here we have a rock that has not been transported very far. It has a bit of gold, but it also got the feldspar and quartz in there, maybe from a granite terrain somewhere in the mountains. And gold is very soft. I mean, you can bite gold. You might know this from pirate movies. So uh, uh, gold is super soft in its pure form. And when um, a pebble is transported, the gold will actually get shaped each time it bounces off the floor of the river. So, and with time, the quartz will break out, but the gold will start to get formed. And with long transport time, you actually make what is known as a gold nugget. This is also why they're so irregularly shaped. There's no single nugget that looks exactly like another nugget. And this is why some of them could be quite large. The biggest nugget is about this size, actually. And if you find one of them, well, you made your fortune. But uh, to find them is very, very challenging, obviously. So here, the transport duration of these rock pebbles, the gold-bearing rock pebbles, makes a huge difference for the concentration of gold. 